In this video, you're going to learn key things that you need to know about a medication used to treat dementia called Dinepazil, also commonly known by its brand name, Aricet. In this video, we're going to cover what Dinepazil is and how it works, how long it usually takes to see effects, who can and can't take it, how you take it and what to do if you accidentally take too much, side effects, as well as interactions with other medications. Now these sections are timestamped, so if you wanted to skip ahead to a particular section, please feel free to do so. So first of all, let's look at Dinepazil and see how it works. Well, Dinepazil is a medicine that helps with some types of dementia, such as Alzheimer's disease. It belongs to a class of medications called acetylcholinesterase inhibitors. Now I know this sounds like a complex as well as a long word, so let's break it down simply. Acetylcholine is an important substance in the brain that allows nerve cells to communicate. An inhibitor is something that stops something from happening. So in this sense, dinepazil, which remember is an acetylcholinesterase inhibitor, simply means that it's a medicine that stops acetylcholine from being broken down in the brain. Now, dinepazil doesn't cure dementia, but by increasing the amount of acetylcholine in your brain, it can help with symptoms that people who have dementia might have. It's things such as forgetting recent conversations and where you put things, forgetting how to do things like making a sandwich or a drink, thinking slowly, for example, taking longer to reply to what someone says, finding it more difficult to understand complicated things like managing money, feeling anxious, or not wanting to do things. Here in the UK, Dinepazil is available on prescription only, meaning it's going to be prescribed by your doctor. It comes as tablets, including tablets that melt in your mouth, as well as a liquid that you can drink. So moving on to think about when you might start to expect to see the effect of Dinepazil. Well, this is going to vary from individual to individual, but it usually takes a month to notice the effects of Dinepazil. However, in certain individuals, it can take longer. So who can and cannot take Dinepazil? Well, Dinepazil should only be taken by adults and it's important that you tell your doctor if you've ever had an allergic reaction to Dinepazil or other medicines that are similar in the past, liver problems, if you've ever had an ulcer in your gut, intestines or a stomach ulcer, heart problems such as an irregular or slow heartbeat, asthma or other lung diseases such as COPD, or if you've ever had a seizure or fit. If you do have one of these conditions, your doctor may consider prescribing you an alternative medicine depending on their clinical judgment. So now let's discuss how and when to take it. Well, some people choose to take Dinepazil at bedtime. This is because you may feel dizzy after you take it, but sometimes it can give you bad dreams or you could find it hard to sleep. So if this is the case, then you can take it in the morning instead. In terms of dosing, Dinepazil comes as either five milligram or 10 milligram tablets. The usual starting dose of Dinepazil is five milligrams taken once a day. Dinepazil also comes as a liquid and a five mil spoonful contains five milligrams of medicine. Now this would be equivalent to one tablet. After a month, the doctor may increase your dose to 10 milligrams once a day, depending on how you're tolerating the medicine. Now in terms of how to practically take the medicine, well if you're taking tablets, then you should swallow them whole with a drink of water. It can also come as a tablet that melts in your mouth. This is called an orodispersible tablet. If this is the form that your medicine comes in, then all you need to do is put the tablet on your tongue and let it dissolve. If you forget to take a dose of Dinepazil, skip the missed dose and take the next one at the normal time the next day. Don't take a double dose to make up for a forgotten dose. Now, if you have forgotten to take your Dinepazil for more than a week, you should speak to your doctor before you take any more. If you do tend to forget your doses often, it may be helpful to set an alarm to remind you. You could also ask your doctor, pharmacist or dementia support group for advice on other ways to help you remember to take your medicine. Now other people speak to their pharmacist and request that their medicines come in something called a Medipack. This is where the pharmacist puts your medicine into a box split up based on the time of day that you need to take the medicine. And it looks similar to this. Now, if you accidentally take too much Dinepazil and you feel dizzy or sick or you're being sick, you're drooling or sweating a lot, you have a very slow heart rate or you're having problems with breathing or you're faint, have a seizure or a fit, then you should seek medical attention urgently. So now we've covered how to take Dinepazil practically, well, let's move on and discuss the side effects of Dinepazil. So like all medicines, Dinepazil can cause side effects, although not everybody gets these. 
Common side effects usually happen in more than one in a hundred people, and these include things such as diarrhea or feeling sick or vomiting. Now, if you develop this, make sure that you drink plenty of water so that you don't become dehydrated. Some people also experience a headache, or they may feel sleepy in the daytime or feel dizzy. Now, in most cases, as your body starts to get used to Dinepazil, these side effects should wear off. If you're still bothered by them after a week or two, then speak to your doctor. They may want to adjust your dose or potentially recommend a different medicine, although usually the doctor will want to try and continue on the Dinepazil as far as possible to make sure that it's starting to have an effect, especially if you've only been taking it for a small amount of time. Now, serious side effects are thankfully much less common. They occur in around one in 100 people. Now, these can include possible liver problems. For example, you might notice that you've got yellow skin called jaundice, although this may not be the case if you're black. The whites of your eyes turn yellow, or you may have pale poo and dark pee. Now, some people may notice they have severe stomach pain and they may develop vomiting. If you develop this, especially if you have blood in the vomit, then you should seek urgent medical attention. Similarly, if you have black poo or blood in the poo or something that looks like coffee grounds in your vomit, again, seek urgent medical attention because this could be a sign of something like a stomach ulcer. Very rarely, some people develop muscle weakness or cramps as well as pains in the muscle that you didn't have before. These can sometimes be signs of muscle and kidney problems. Also, very rarely some people develop high temperature together with very stiff muscles, sweating, confusion, and seeing or hearing things that aren't there. These can be signs of a very rare side effect called neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Now, if you develop any of these more serious side effects, please seek urgent medical attention. It's also important to note that these aren't a full or comprehensive list of side effects, and for a full list of these, please see the medicine information pack on the inside of the medicines packet. In terms of interactions or cautions with other medicines, well, some medicines don't mix so well with Dinepazil. They can increase the risk of side effects, or they can stop Dinepazil working as well as it should. And these include things like medicines used for the heart, things like atenolol, bisoprolol, digoxin, and verapamil, medicines used for epilepsy, things like phenytoin, some anti-inflammatory medicines like ibuprofen, and more. Now, these aren't again a full list of medicines that can interact with Dinepazil, and for a full list of these, please see the inside of the medicine packet. I do hope you found the video useful and informative, and for a full list of resources and references that I've used to make the video, please check out the description box. If you did enjoy the video, please remember to give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment if you've got any questions, and I'll try and answer them as best as I can, and if you haven't done so already, please remember to subscribe to the channel. I think it would also be fantastic if you or a loved one who are using Dinepazil could share your experiences if you feel comfortable doing so in the comments section so that others can learn from this. Thanks again for watching and until next time, 